kind of a fart uh, about many down ones. And I know exactly what happened, and I know exactly how the information was gleaned, um, and I know the, the, the workings of what happened after, um, after her, well, before and during and after um, her phone was, um, was tapped. It had nothing to do with, with Surrey Police. Right, so she was, she was phone tapped, and that has never come out. You deserve better compensation for what's happened to you. Just justice, money, whatever it is. I also think here is contained, the first time I've seen it quite clearly, collusion between Mazza and phone hacking. And Mazza was doing bugging. Mazza was doing much worse things than phone hacking. Yeah. Buying drugs, selling people up. Before she went missing, we were actually sharing the same room, um, even though we had two rooms, um, because we just got really, really close. We slept in the same room so we could stay up late and gossip and probably have midnight feasts of sweets that we'd stolen from the fridge. <laughs> On Thursday the 21st of March 2002, Millie left Heathside School in Weybridge as normal at five past three. She then walked to the train station with her friend Danielle. CCTV shows the schoolgirls entering the station and on the platform. This is the last time Millie's seen on camera. We'd spoken about the fact that we hadn't had a catch up in a little while and um, and that it was well overdue, so we decided that we'd walk to the train station together. She was in a really good, playful, fun mood. Uh, the two of us were bouncing off each other as usual. Now we got off at Walton. Um, that's not normally the stop that she'd get off at. Uh, I said to her, would she like to come off and, and get some chips from the cafe? Um, and after a bit of banter between the two of us, she agreed. That, that, that she'd come and, and join me. So we went into the cafe. There were a couple of other uh, boys there from our school, but the two of us sat together and, yeah, again, discussed more about we boys and <laughs> various other things. At 3.47, Millie phoned home. She never had credit, so uh, we borrowed one of the boys that was in the cafe, we borrowed his phone. Hey, Dad. It's Millie. She yeah, made a phone call to her dad to, uh, yeah. to tell him that she'd be home late. Uh, it's something that we would always do so that they didn't worry. Well, my sister arrived and um, didn't want to wait around at the cafe, so she ushered us out quite quickly. I'll see you tomorrow. OK. I said to her, will you be all right walking home on your own? We were all looked after each other, um, but we live Bye. in a nice area. It was broad daylight. She was walking along a main road. Um, obviously, I double-checked with her, and, and the question itself seemed silly. Um, she laughed and, and just said, don't be ridiculous, I'll be absolutely fine. There was no reason why she shouldn't have been. And that was the last time that I saw her. Millie left the station just after four, setting off alone down Station Avenue. At eight minutes past, a friend of Gemma's waiting at the bus stop spotted her. Right, 4.08, she comes out of here. She would have gone across here.
just keep going. All right, just keep going. And more than likely, she would have walked along here. This is the way it was made to look to me, right? Now, from here, this is what this is how they made it look. Keep coming, but get the bus stop in as well. Keep coming. Keep coming. So Gemma Dalla's friends over there, Catherine. I was just there waiting for my bus and Millie was walking on the other side of the road. Um, and it must have been within 30 seconds, maybe up to a minute, that my bus came round to pick me up. Catherine Lanes is sitting here. And uh, Millie walks past. Jumped on the bus and looked out for her, and I didn't see her. At the time, obviously, didn't think too much of it, thought it was a bit strange. Thought that I would have seen her walking if her intention was to go home. But at that time, you don't really think too much into it. So, um, so that's what, what happened, and I just carried on and went home. And she doesn't call out to her. Doesn't make any sense to me. Millie, go in the same direction. The bus was coming from that direction, right? And she was concentrating on getting on the bus. So she forgets about Millie, who supposedly carries off walking down now, right? Now, she gets on the bus and she says, when she got on the bus, it was between uh, 30 seconds and a minute later. It must have been within 30 seconds, maybe up to a minute, that my bus came round to pick me up. Jumped on the bus. So that's taken up her time and she's looked down there and I can't see Millie anywhere. Looked out for her and I didn't see her. At the time, obviously, didn't think too much of it. Thought it was a bit strange. Thought that I would have seen her walking if her intention was to go home. But at that time, you don't really think too much into it. So, um, so that's what, what happened and I just carried on and went home. Oh, Millie, Millie, nothing. Don't say nothing. She carries on walking. She's walking, she's walking. This is much later in the day now than it was. It was bright, there's still traffic even now happening. 40 seconds later, boom. At that time, there's not many people walking down, down the road. Also, it had been a few minutes that had passed since the train arrived, so the rush had already gone from the people which were walking back home. So it wasn't busy, but there, are, there were always cars driving by. So you would have thought that something might have been heard or seen. But as it turns out, it was nothing. Now, what I'm saying is, is that ain't the truth. That is the story that has been concocted to account for Millie's disappearance. Because by doing that, you can come to no other conclusion that it was Belfield. And I think it's a lie. I don't believe it. Around the corner from here is a pub called the Ashley Park. And that pub, coincidentally, is 33 years old. Now, I believe that to be a meeting place. Now, we've heard that Levi Belfield was drinking partners with Michael Payne, the father of murdered schoolgirl Sarah Payne. That happens in 2000. And Belfield is drinking with Michael Payne in the Ashley Park pub around the corner up until 2004. They say up until Michael Payne realised that Belfield's flat up there at Collingwood Place had been taped off and thought, what's going on here? And that he was devastated, apparently, when he found out that Belfield had killed Millie, knowing that Michael Payne had just lost his daughter in 2000. Now, here's the interesting thing. The officer 
that they bring in to solve the Millie Dyler case in the beginning, the head of police, they got rid of one guy called Gibson, because I believe Gibson done his job, right? And, and, and what he done was he accused Bob Dyler, right, of murdering Millie, due to the contents of a letter that was found in Millie's bedroom that was looking like she'd run away, or this note was placed there as an excuse as for Millie not to come back anymore. That is what I believe it was for. Millie's father, is accused by the police. And then what the police do is they say that this is a bungled inquiry and that there's been five mess ups and that Bob Dallas should never have been charged in the first place. My name is Michael Payne, and I am a nosy neighbour. Yeah, make sure. Because I know nothing. Um, yeah, it, it's completely different, because you could just walk through the station, like if you wanted to go around there, you could just walk through. Yeah. And so there was no barriers to jump or... So I wonder now if you you can't just walk straight through to get to the other side without actually you, doing you the train thing. You can walk through and probably go left, because you're not going through that. So if you walk through, I don't know if it's open, Yeah. and then go left, Yeah without going through a barrier to get to it. Do you know what I mean? You should be able to get to it without causing any issue. Yeah. If you want to go and have a look. If not, maybe there's a way of walking round or something or getting round. You should be able to cut through there, I would have thought. No, 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 because th there isn't one on the other side. So you go up the steps or, well, I don't know, what, where's he going? Well, you because about you can right either on. get in, but sometimes that gate's locked. But if you go through, you don't have, the barriers are there. Right. You turn left. So the ticket office is here. You go through, turn left, and it's a cafe where people buy sandwiches or coffee bars. And that's yes. the one, do you reckon? That's got to be it, isn't it? That's so, got, that's well, got to be the one. there isn't another one. Well, that's got to be that one then. Do they yeah. sell chips in there? I have no idea. <laughs> but you could go and ask. Yeah, I'm going to ask. But it's not something that you would notice. If they sell chips, it must have been pre-packaged. Yeah, it was a what? Well, it was 20 years ago. Because, yeah, well, well maybe they maybe they did. Who knows? I reckon that. I re What's that? Um, well, could, could have Giuseppe been. Giuseppe, it could be, but there's nothing nearby. Look, nothing nearby like chip no, shop. There no, the nearest chip shop it would be down by. The and that's past right? where she was. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that, yeah. that don't work yeah. out. All right, well, let's get this bit outside the outside the pub here. Anyway, then. thanks for thank you, thank you. Nice meeting Patsy. you. What's your name? I'm Patsy. Nice to meet you, Patsy. You too. Take care, so, darling. Really? Well, That's his mum's name, It's yeah. an omen, isn't it? It was yeah. meant to be. It was meant for me to, to meet stop. You, and you? Nikki. Nikki. Hi, Nikki. <laughs> Take care. Thanks, so Patsy. So everyone goes, I'll be watching. What's it, Watch what it. It's going to be on, on. There's a YouTube channel. It's my okay. one. It's called BHTV Plus. Okay. And it'll probably be up there in the next couple of days. All right. All right, Patsy. Nice to meet you. Thank Take you, care. Darling. I will You're looking do. good. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 So uh, you want to line this shot up again? Uh, you want to be there, yeah? Yeah, is that that's where we are, isn't it? I was I, I was I here before. Right. It weren't like that. Is that getting the pub in? Yeah, we've got the whole pub here. Yeah, yeah? all right then. I'm like that. I'm all right, cool. Oh, she's going in the pub as well. We're standing outside the Ashley Park pub now, and this pub here, this is where Belfield and Michael Payne uh, allegedly were drinking partners in this pub here. Now, I've, I've looked into the company's house report on this place, and this is 33 years old. So, my suspicion is that is a meeting place for it all. And as you can see, you can be sitting in the Ashley Park pub, and you can directly see out of the window the train station. It's there. There's the pub. There's the train station right there. Right, so what we're doing now is we're standing on the other side of the road. Where we was filming just now, we were standing on that corner, facing the pub. Now we've got the pub behind us, just so you can see the view from the pub back to the train station, which is just over there. So it would be quite easy for someone to be sitting outside here, sitting up here in any of these windows, watching that train station for when Millie came out of there. Because I do believe she was killed, um, but not by Belfield and not on that day. This is Levi Belfield's old address, 24 Collingwood Place. Allegedly, this is where Millie was taken when she was killed. This is what they want you to believe. 
Belfield is hiding behind here, waiting for Millie to walk past. Thing is, he's just behind is the front view of all the, uh, the front of the flats. So there's no way he was standing here waiting for Millie to come out, do that, right? You do get people walking past. As you see, we've got a guy coming down here now. It's quite busy. It's not, it's not overly busy, but you'd really have to time it right if that's really the way that it worked. Let's go, let's go and have a look and see if we can get to the, to the door of 24 Collingwood Place. Let's, see, let's have a look at the journey that Millie would have took, right? So the official story is she's here. Belfield's hiding behind here. Come this way with me, Lee. Right, it's a bit of a tight gap here. Right, but Belfield's apparently hiding here. Now, people walk past here all of the time you would have been seen, plus you'd be seen by that lot. There's no way a guy's going to be hiding here. So I don't think the gate was there at the time. There's no way a geezer's hiding here with all that going on behind you. Have a look, please. Already, I mean, I feel like I'm being watched here. Twenty-four, this way. So she's bought in here, allegedly. In full view of all of this. So she was able to come through here. Is it that one over there, Lee? Yes, this one. Ah, this is it. Right, so she's been allegedly she's been taken from the front, pulled all the way through here. I don't know, hand over mouth, if if that's how the story goes, and bought here. So you got all these lot round here, Lee. Look. Look at all these flats in the view. Of, I mean, you couldn't be more on display, really. Could you? Well, it's about this is the time of day that it was. We're, we're now filming, it's about half past four. Um, she, she officially goes missing at 4.08. And the last sighting of her is the bus stop that we're gonna go to in a minute. And then allegedly, he's hiding behind that bush in full view of all of the front of the flats took her through that thing, bought her around here. Oh, you know, if there's any noise, someone would hear, people in there, people up there, and then she's brought to here. I mean, look. So 23 to 28, this is it. So I that. Trade. Right, we're not gonna be able to go in there. So let's carry on then, let's go back to where we came from. Well, look at all them houses up there. Yeah. Yeah, look at all the houses up there. It don't make no sense. You know, all of this being dragged through here. Yeah, that is it, that's the block there. Let's go back to the road. Right, so over there would be the back of the back of the hedge, right? And that's where allegedly Belfield is hiding until Millie comes past the bus stop and, and she's seen walking past the bus stop by one of Gemma's friends. People on the family side are pulling up all the eyewitnesses, right? And I do not trust Bob Dalla because he was arrested first and he was cleared, right? And he was cleared by the guy that had just put away Jonathan King. And that officer's name was Jeremy Payne. So she ends up here, allegedly. What's Belfield doing, waiting behind that bush there? He's here, is he? Yeah? What's he doing that? Yeah, the chances of cars coming along. Turn around, look, there's people. Turn around, even now. Yeah? It's traffic, but this geezer, and there'd be no gates here then. There'd be no gates here, but he's here. Here she comes, here she comes. 
Bosch. Look, someone would have seen straight away. Someone would have seen. Carl's going, well, you've done that, come on. Yeah? Hey, come out. And tell me you wouldn't have been seen. By all them, all of this, there's still traffic now. Yeah? At that time, there's not many people walking down, down the road. Also, it had been a few minutes that had passed since the train arrived, so the rush had already gone from people which were walking back home. So it wasn't busy, but there, are, there were always cars driving by. So you would have thought that something might have been heard or seen, but as it turns out, it was nothing. It's, all you've been given is a dead-end story, and all it leads to is here. Yeah? This is what it leads to, this place. You can come to no other conclusion if you believe the official story, which I don't. And no one does anymore. Shit, don't add up. And that, the bus stop, let's go back to the bus stop. Let's go back to the bus stop. And let's time it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. That's not good. 33 seconds. How long's that pub been going round the corner? 33 years. Right, so I'm going to pop in, I'm going to ask the owner. Hello mate, how's it going? Um, has this got different ownership to um, back when Millie Dalla was taken? This pub, do you know? It's different brand. I'm not sure. Well, it's definitely different. It's still about uh, the landlord. Definitely different landlord. Different landlord. Oh, without a doubt, yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is what this place is under different management from what it would have oh, been yeah, in, in 2002, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. It's probably, it's, it's, I think it's still the same brand of, and company, but definitely different management. Yeah. Years, yeah. So there'd be there'd be no one in here that I could talk to that would know. Anything about Belfield, Bob Dalla? Well, my old man got his cab once, but that's about it. In, in, in whose cab? Belfield's cab? Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. He used to work for Shepparton Cars. For who? Shepparton Cars. Shepparton Cars. Yeah. Oh, right. And uh, that's all about all I know, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. All right. What about, um, about Michael Payne, the, the father of murdered Sarah Payne? Michael Payne, you ever seen him drinking in here? I mean, how long have you been here? This would have been 2014 latest. Uh, I've, been here, uh, I've been here two years. Oh, you've been I'm here two years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Um, is the owner not about? Or not about? Not about. So, no, honestly, the owner's only, he's been at Birmingham. He's only been here uh, two years. Is that ben Benefield? Benfield. Benfield. What, Conrad? No, no, no. Con there's not a Conrad Benefield attached to this place. No, it's that's uh, strange. All right, mate. Nice one. Thanks a lot, yeah? See you later, mate. That's a fucking Masonic pub if I've ever seen one.
Then, in September, Millie's family received the news that they had been dreading. Police investigating the disappearance of Amanda Dowler have visited Woodland in Hampshire, where human remains were found on Wednesday. Two people walking find the remains of a body. How do you hear about that? They were a couple that um, would go mushroom picking. They'd gone in there because it was a perfect area for the growing of rare mushrooms, and they would collect them and sell them and they'd gone into Walton Police Station to, to report that they'd found what they believed to be Millie Dowler. Did you go to the site? Yes, I did, yeah, that night. When you walked to the site, did, did you yourself have a feeling? Yes, I did. I thought that it was Millie. 24 hours later, police confirmed that the remains were those of the missing schoolgirl. She compared the remains found in Yateley Heath Wood yesterday with the dental records of Amanda Dowler. We can now confirm the results of the examination it was almost certainly those of the missing Amanda. I was in the house and my mum was in the garden um, and then my mum just collapsed and I was just like, oh my goodness. That was just the worst feeling because there's absolutely nothing you can do. I can't, I can't console her. My dad can not console her. All she wanted was Millie back and no one could do anything to help that. Well, we all did. The investigation was now a murder inquiry. Did the post-mortem tell you anything about how Millie had died? It didn't tell us how she died but we knew that she didn't have any of her clothing. Well, I suppose you could say that it sort of draws a line under this dreadful, dreadful story of Millie's abduction, rape and subsequent murder. Although, of course, we need to remember that Levi Belfield has only now admitted his guilt after a long trial in 2011. You know, it was nine years between the commission of the offence and him standing trial. All those years of pain and heartache for Bob and Sally Dowler, her parents and other friends and family. And then he finally admits it now. He had the opportunity to admit his guilt some years ago. He could have prevented the family going through an extremely traumatic trial. He chose not to, and he's chosen only now to finally admit his guilt. Why would he have done this now, after all this time? Well, back in September of 2002, when Millie's remains were discovered in Yateley Heath Woods, there was a witness who came forward and was regarded as being credible by the police at the time, who said he'd seen two men with uh, a young girl around about the time of Millie's abduction, which, of course, was in the March of 2002. Now, at the time, the police felt this may be a significant witness, so perhaps there was always a question mark over whether somebody else was involved in her abduction, subsequent murder. Perhaps this has been put to Belfield, and perhaps he felt that he would finally take the, the rap for it himself in order to dispel any lingering thoughts as to whether somebody else was an accomplice. Yeah, and we do know that police were questioning a suspected accomplice who has been uh, released without a charge. Um... I know that Surrey Old Bill, Surrey Old Bill, right, who gave Neville Felbeck Millie Dowler's number, Surrey Old Bill around the corner from my ex-wife and their family, Reg Carnegie, who's a Freemason. Right, and he kept in the background on that. Now, Surrey Old Bill gave Felbeck Millie's number on the day she went missing. I've had, I've had that, I've had that out of, out of Glenn. He's been in my house and admitted it. No, no, Brian, they didn't. They didn't. Well, that's why is he saying that then? If, if that's not true, because it goes against the official story that they've put out and makes everyone look like a liar, Greg. It's not. It's not. I, I listen. I mean, I know the far end of a fart. Uh, about Millie Dower, and I know exactly what happened, and I know exactly how the information was gleaned, um, and I know the, the the workings of what happened after um, after her, well, before 
and during and after um, her phone was um, was tapped. It had nothing to do with with Surrey police. Right. So she was she was phone tapped, and that has never come uh-huh. out. And, and that has never cut, and that, and that has never come out, Greg. And the other thing is, she's done, or the or the official story of uh, of 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 uh, of Glenn getting her number on the tenth. That's the tenth of April, right? That's that's like a couple of weeks just before my sting. Now the problem that Kellaway's got is he tells the inquiry that he knew nothing of phone hacking or Millie Daler's voicemails being accessed. Yet, in I come walking with his police witness statement that Richard Mallett wasn't going to give to me when he knew that I didn't have the paperwork still from 2002 with our case. He wasn't going to give it to me. And lo and behold, he's working with Duncan Larkham at that time. So no wonder he wasn't going to send it because he came in to me on a clean-up for you lot. Well, I, I, you know, I think, that, I think that you've, you've created a... Um... No, I've not created nothing. Don't tell me I've created anything, Greg. Come uh, on, man. Uh, Greg, you called the job on, for fuck's sake. You uh, have created... Look, well, I'm trying to be helpful. It's right? not helpful, because you called the job on, and you're telling me I'm creating shit. You were the ones that created it. No, 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 no. No, no what do you mean, no? Did you... All right, then. Did you or did you not send Kelly out of Chinkford? Oh, yeah. Right. Did you or did you not send Comrade Brown to Chinkford? Well, it's on paper. It's on paper. It's on paper. It's on paper well, anyway. You did. Well, it's on, it's on paper you did because you was news editor at the time. So, who... Right. right, let me ask you one question. Who was instructing you to do it to me? Because this this just get... This this just get this will just get you off the hook then, yeah? Because you're not really... You're not really going to help me. Who done it? Who, who's instructed you? Was it Brooks? No. Yeah, it was. Because she didn't want to be caught to court because I know she knew about it. I've got a quote from her. Rebecca Wade, as she was known back then, apparently very unhappy about the way the case was handled. What part of the case did she think was handled badly? Because I've got a quote from her. It was the tapping. Greg, it was the tapping. Right? No one's admitted the tapping. You've admitted the tapping, but they haven't admitted the tapping. But you've admitted the tapping, and you was the news editor. So you're important. You're the one that makes it corporate. I really, I, I can tell you now that, that Rebecca Wade had nothing to do with that story, other than at the time she was the editor and printed it. That's right. it. What, but she, what, so she, right, so was it Coulson? No. It was Coulson, it must have been, because he's on the email with Tom Crone and Neil Wallace, come on man, all of these people knew I was yeah. tapped, and the way that I can prove that I was tapped is that, it's public. It's publicised on the fifth of May, and it's on that email to Tom Crone that's got Andy Coulson on it. So therefore, those lines, right, that we got transcripts for, that you never gave us the tape, the, the audio tapes for, that we was asking for in disclosure, right? It's all very well giving us compilations. We wanted the full thing, and then if we'd have got the full thing, what would we have found on that tape? Would we have found Millie Daler? Would we have found information to do with Millie Daller? Because it was the same month and Glenn Mulcair's notes were not in chronological order. And I've got page 59 missing, though I've got 58 and 60. Even Glenn himself said there was five. Right? So there's three pages missing for a start. Look, we know what's going on. I'm going to have no problem proving it. Well, I'm sorry. I don't think... I mean, if there's a way in which I could prove or could help you, I would... There isn't, um, you know, I'm sorry, but... Listen, I think uh, you've already helped me. You've already helped me. Even even with a quote, that's why I put you on the front of that video, Greg, because the quote that you said there, we would never we would never run a story based on a piece of information from a voicemail. Exactly. So I was phone tapped, and you know I was phone tapped. We wouldn't. Well, are, you, are you now saying you didn't phone tap me? Right, so let me ask you the question straight. Let me no, let me ask you the question straight. Let me ask you the question straight, Greg. Did you phone tap me? I don't remember whether we did or we didn't, to be honest with you. Alright. I really can't All right. remember. Alright. Come on, Greg, man. Greg, come on, man. You know. Brian, Brian, you've got to understand something, right? Yeah. This was a big thing for you, and I can understand why you're pursuing. Mate, they fucked my life up, mate, so yeah, that's why. 
in your life and you know every, what you think is every single intimate detail of what happened. I... You I, won't. Yeah, I know. I'll get you. I do I get you. I do get you. Hundreds of stories. Hundreds of stories. You know, some big, some not so big. But I dealt with hundreds of them. And I don't remember the minutiae of what happened on a given story. There's bits I do remember. Yeah, the minutiae, the little itty-bitty things. All right, all right, all right. I'll just, all right, all right, all right. No, all right, no I'll get you, I'll get you. Right, let's just go by what's on, on black and white then, what we've all seen. How have I got transcripts? How have I got transcripts of private telephone conversations? I don't, I don't know. Well, you called the job on, you must know. It's very convenient for you to keep saying you don't know and not put your name to anything, but it's all on paper, Greg. I'm just trying to get this thing sorted out so I can move on because I feel like I'm going round in circles again now. You know, I'd be, I'd be lying to you if I told you that I did know. I don't. I was phone-tapped. Rebecca Brooks knew about it. Rebecca Brooks knows what she thought was handled badly. why she didn't want to come to court. What do you remember from my case? Just, all right, let's just go, let's just go with that. Just tell me, just tell me off the top of, Greg, off the top of your head, what you do remember. Please. Please, mate. Please. Right, I don't, Greg, I'm not, seriously, mate, I'm not trying to go for you, I'm not trying to stitch you up, let me get to the truth, let me sort it out, let them pay me, and I'll fuck off, but they're not leaving me on benefits, I sold 22 million records, I was going to America, and because these people decided to set me up, my life's got to stop, and I've got to go to prison over something that I didn't fucking do when I was trying to see my baby, do you understand where I'm coming from, Greg? Right, that's where I'm coming from. Now, I'm not trying to be a problem to you. I'm trying to get to who the fuck is targeting me. Because when I do fucking get them, God help them, mate. Fucking God help them. I was trying to see my kid. Right, I was being fucked over left, right and centre. Now, Greg, I'm asking you, please. I, I remember very, very little. I remember Rob Callaway was involved. And to be honest with you, it, it, I, I, don't remember, I don't remember Conrad being involved. Well, he was. I've got his police witness statement, so you've only got to read it. It wouldn't surprise me if he, if he, would, uh, if, if he was involved. It wouldn't surprise me if Maher wasn't involved in some way. What I'm saying is that Glenn will care. May, if, if there's something on paper that Glenn, you know, with your name on it, and uh, is, is, there, is there a top left? Is yeah, top name, left, top, top left, left, top left. Yeah. Who, whose name is there? Uh, Neville. Neville. Yeah, Neville, 2nd of the 5th, 02. And that's the same day that Kellaway transcribes and sends his recordings to DS Werrett on email. Right, so, so it was Neville who, who contacted uh, Mulcair. Uh, Mulcair yeah. then, uh, so are these the pages 58? 58 and 60, uh, yeah. No, I never yeah. got, I never got, I never got 59. But Tash has been paid on one of the pages or, or more. So obviously what they've done is they've paid her on that evidence and then they've tried, and which is what's come from Scotland Yard again, because uh, Hugh Giles there wouldn't send me page 59. And I said, look, we were still married at the time. My right and private, right to private and family life covers that. And I've got a right to see that document. And they never let me see it. And I was in full right to see it, so it's another, but it's another downside for Scotland Yard. And, you know, I mean, Mulcair, as you can see from his notes, is very incredibly sloppy the way he writes things up. Yeah. For all I know, and I'm not saying this is the case, but what I am saying is, is the possibility that uh, fifty fifty eight was you, and sixty was you, and fifty nine was somebody else. So what was so what was what page was Natasha paid on then? Because I should have been able to see that. Paid on. Yeah, she got paid. She, I mean, she got paid. I ne I've ne I've never been paid. They've never they've ne they've never paid me anything. And Jesse right. Wallace, Jesse right. Wallace is on my page as well. I mean, if if Wallace. if Jesse Wallace is on there, yeah, Smart Lane. There's an address for her, Smart Lane, on there, right? And um, you know, if, if the police were genuine in what they were saying, Greg, they half blank out my numbers. Right, but they leave Jesse Wallace's details open on there. It doesn't make any sense, right? If if that was genuine, what they were saying, but it, it's not genuine, you know. And, and and the fact that they're blanking out, why would they blank out the number? 
Oh, they do that. They redact numbers. Yeah, I know, but that's out of order because they fucked themselves. Yeah, because I've received. I sent the DSL well. Why did you bank out the number? Well, we probably didn't attribute it to you. Well, why'd you fucking send it to me then? And he's all stuttering all over it. Look, I, I know what they've done, Greg. No one's ever going to convince me otherwise. It doesn't matter. Somebody's privacy. That's what they're doing. But they haven't. Because it was my number that they banked out. And I've said to him, why have you banked out my number? I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Let me tell you why. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because Richard Mallet. Because Richard Mallet would, would knows him there at Scotland Yard because that's who they liaised for. And Richard Mallet's gone to him. Listen, I doubt he'll even remember that number now. Brian's had quite a few bad years behind him. You know, it's not it's not been that great. So I doubt he'll even remember the number. So leave leave half of it on there so it looks like we're playing fair. They are all in on it. Yeah, listen, right. You see, what they what the police decide to do is those documents don't just go to you. They didn't re- redact it just because of you. Those documents will have gone to a whole stack of people, right? Various people who are involved in the prosecution and the defence. So they don't want, you know, so they didn't redact it for you, they redacted it for everybody. <sighs> no, it's, it's not, it's, it's, they, 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 yeah, no, there was, there was. There, Greg, it's so bloody obvious, mate. And when people say that there ain't, it's just, it's ridiculous. There's a massive cover-up gone on here, massive. I mean, uh, you know, Rebecca Brooks destroying that evidence. I mean, that's perverting the course of justice straight away. But no, not guilty. You know, it, it, look, we know, we know. She was never going down because she's fucking, because she's fucking Murdoch's fucking bird. Why, why have her address on there, then, on my page? Why is that on there? Why is that not redacted if that's a page that's coming to me? See, it doesn't make it doesn't make any sense. I can't. You can't speak for the police, I know, but I will. Why her address is there and your number was partially redacted, you know... I, I, I don't know what's going through their heads. That's what I'm saying. No, I'm I'm telling. I'm if anything, I'm I'm cluing you up with it because this is what I'm seeing first hand, Greg. Which I, it only points in in one direction. Look, we know what's happened. I don't give a fuck right about all the rest of it because I'd, I've already tried to go and do something good for this country and got a cane in for it, trying to fight these fucking child abuse cunts, right? So. Um, and I've seen the backlash on that. People don't give a fuck. They're not ready to move. They're not ready to do the right thing. So fuck everyone else. What are we going to do about my thing? Because Hacked Off are right up in the middle of this as well. And, and the fact that they're paying you and Glenn, and then they're coming, you're talking to real victims that are actually real victims that are being made to feel here, like, hang on a minute, maybe we're in the wrong. No, fuck that. I got plastered all over that newspaper so that cunt that owns that paper can make money off my fucking back. Right? And I... And I was depressed, I was fucking ill, right, which I still am, right, to this very day, because of this geezer, because of what he done to my life, Kellaway even said himself he's doing much better these days, well, not anymore, thanks to you, mate, right, so, fuck every, fuck everyone else, what are we going to do about my situation, because I ain't going away, there's the bottom line, what, what can we do about it, what can we do, I personally don't want to dra- start having to go and drag you through the court, I don't, I don't want to, you, you worked at a paper, you want to do it. It's, 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 uh, it, you know, it's not, it's not something that I, that I concern myself with. Well, look, look, listen, listen. It's not, it's not a threat. It's not a threat. I know, I know. Listen, let me finish, right? It's not a threat. It's not a threat. It's not a threat. It's, 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 it's something that I've got to do. But your information has been very helpful because. Well, if it's been helpful, then good. No, it has, it has. And thank you for that, by the way. And and, and thank you for talking to me because. All right, okay. You know, like. No, Brian, I've got to go, okay? All right. Sorry, I'm sorry, okay. All Bye. right, nice one. See you, mate. Bye. Well, I've got to admit, the press don't help matters because they're always reporting sex cases. And especially inside, people get a lot of sexual satisfaction out of reading about sex cases. Um, that's why in most prisons the news of the world is the most popular newspaper going because it satisfies people's needs while they're inside. It's the, the, for a paper that professes to be working against it, it's doing quite a lot to sort of perpetuate the situation.